Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's time to take the global stories making headlines in our national dailies. And joining us to review the papers is Chris Kainde Wandu. As a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK, he's joining us from Lagos State. Good morning, Mr. Chris. Always a pleasure having you. Good morning and happy Easter to you and all our viewers. Good morning. Same to you. Good morning. You. Same to you. <laughs> Okay, so we'll be starting with the Daily Independence today, and this talks about Naira gains. So the major headlines on the Daily Independence is Naira gains 660 Naira on $7 billion FX backlog clearance, BTC's return. What is your take on this one? Well, it's good news uh, for me. Uh, if you look at where we were about uh, three months ago, it was uh, about 1,900, that was almost hitting. 2000, and um, people were predicting that uh, before the end of April, the Naira Park had to be hit 2000 mark. Um, but from what you see, that some policies and uh, people took place by the Central Bank of Mexico working uh, for now. Uh, so the last time um, I checked, I think it was something between 1300 and 1300, which is a huge leap. Um, but my hope, my problem is the sustainability of that. I hope that it will remain safe. And not after about um, two weeks or a week, in a few days, uh, we're going to have a lapse to what it used to be. But moving forward, uh, I still believe that um, the solution to some of this problem is what we need to do. One, uh, we need to respond to um, the European community by Central Bank. If I really need anything for them, we're going to have some time. Well, as I said, the, the issue of exporting one so that we can ask, uh, we're going to aim for um, foreign exchange. We no, we're going to do the same thing around the world. We're going to do the same thing around the world. We're going to do the basal currency, but it's not only dollars. We have other currencies uh, that match with that. The two is also to look at our foreign uh, 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 capacity. Um, we we'll look at our current. Um, the production um, or information as it were, it has been and it has dropped. The best thing that you have to be able to report that uh, we will start importing crude oil from the uh, United States. Uh, I don't I can't remember when that happened the last time. When we used to export crude and export petroleum products, or not to be uh, importing crude oil means that our um, capacity to export our crews um, is driven by the day. And that's very good to the question what happened to the contractors that we are paid by being paid. Uh, there is a determiner or whatever they call them that will be the billions and billions of Naira paid to secure uh, the various partners in the Niger Delta. That means that oil theft is on the rise. And what is also meant is that we are not going to use our open water on uh, crude oil. So, these are the areas we should be looking at. There are also areas like mining, like um, food, uh, food, um, item, and culture for what I would say. Cash crops. We uh, look at the cash crops um, of that we are looking at exporting. We come to look at the challenges, mainly security challenges that we have been We are going to the farm. And um, that is that is also people security in the future. But in totality, I hope that we will be able to sustain this. The best thing I always ask is that I can be able to look at what it was um, as of uh, June, when it was May, May the 23rd state, how much was a dollar time? That to me is the same point. It was around 700,000 that we are looking at. We are still looking at about 1,000. I don't see the level of equipment that compared to that we are coming later. So one thing you talked about was you hope that it is sustainable and not that it would move up again in uh, another few days or few weeks. Now, I wanted to talk about foreign investors because, as you know, the um, president has been moving around looking for foreign investors. And I don't think that any foreign investor would want to come to an economy that is not sustainable or you cannot even ascertain how much the currency will be. Do you think that's one of the fears that we should have, even though we're seeing the gains in the Naira, but do we do you think we might still get foreign investors coming in? Yes, foreign investors are always the best in complex. My own biggest challenge is not to be part of Naira. Yes, the volatility of Naira is there. Uh, and the inconsistency 
policy, government policy, social government policies. That is a, is a problem. But for me, the best challenge is power. If we look at two, power and this security, no foreign legislative investor will come to invest in the country or uh, in the place where there is a high level of security. And that is a big challenge. It can scare anybody. No matter what you go to the world, and realize that where you invest, in terms of, I'm talking of security in the sense of people, not the only security, I'm talking of security, where lines and properties uh, are just too cheap and British uh, as a trade, as we said before. Well. Um, that will scare anybody. But you also look at the area of power. What are we powering? What, uh, what, what is our capacity? You see our uh, uh, national group collapsing into like a pack of cards. Oh, well, it's up to do, it's down to go, it's up to do. And we are not going to know that um, 4,000 megawatts of power in the country of about 200 million people. South Africa, that is, is just there. Uh, with the Lisa, um, uh, population has over 16,000 megawatts in the last. So, uh, anybody coming to invest in your place, they believe that you are going to invest in your own power, and then your own power generating uh, system, or, and that in itself does not, it's going to cause you to matter. So, I think that the solution to this and I can make the most as a chairman is able to increase our capacity, our capacity to generate and distribute. The challenge here is also that the fact that the way we need to generate, we don't have the capacity to, um, to distribute them because the lines, uh, the provision lines as a chair cannot be able to take more than a particular surround, particular um, uh, level of power. So we generate by distributing more than we have to and that is a, is a problem. And it's so important that I love to say is that we are talking about the same uh, power plants that are just been uh, activated and um, the total 700 uh, megawatts capacity. Let me shock you, my sister, but what I'm hearing, yes, we have important that the new government has been able to move that power generated to the national grid. That is not so that that generating alternative is not removed from what is being generated to the national grid. The national grid. If we're going to have a we should be talking about close to about 5,000 megawatts. So we are looking at now people who are looking at now, and we are giving another contract for a person to come in and not be able to build, and so that we are able to build the capacity to be able to overcome what has been generated. So we ask ourselves, where are those power countries being built? We are having factors into the contract. I think we are going to work in this country. So, foreign uh, investment, yes, key. We do not have any president does or whatever the past president does. If we don't be able to build the energy environment for foreign investors to be able to track them, that's not good. Because you ask your question, what are things that are already here? What are they doing? This is a very good shop. The SMEs are very good. 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 Okay, um, let's look at the crisis in Kaduna State. It is a little bit political. Uh, we're going now. Uh, the woman leader remember that she was suspended uh, by, because he, she criticized the governor. Uh, a lot of things that she saw and she said they were not going well. She's now saying uh, that uh, he, he, El Rufai, who is the uh, previous governor, the as well governor of Kaduna State, single-handedly made the governor a senator. Now, Senator Shehu Sani, who had cried out a long time ago when um, uh, Rufai was still the governor, said that he has been vindicated. So we're just looking at things. You criticize a governor, you're suspended. You criticize a governor, sometimes you are even jailed. You criticize a president, you go to jail and all that. I don't know how we can make our democracy strong if internally people cannot even talk. Yes, but I mean, um, the person which I just said, what the government put to before is a lie. It is a lie that every um, should come and uh, uh, debunk all the uh, figures being uh, planned by the government. And I've not seen anyone do that. All the best thing is uh, throwing this. Everyone has been going to talk. I think it's already the son that was uh, ranting on social media a few days ago and the rest of them. Then the woman that came out to say something against against the governor and uh, was suspended by the DC. But the fact is that 
what the government said. Is it a lie? Is it, is it not true that everybody pays so much that the government says it's only because of the salaries? Yeah, that is a wrong part. Um, so, uh, we don't have the right to declare that because if we do this obligation as a government to the people, then the people will ask for some so that if we this there, then they should be able to know where the problem is coming. That is not the wrong part. The second part for me is that the government, to me, uh, I think, uh, is saying that cannot pay salary because it's paying so much, it's not that here, not there for me. Because if you ask yourself, if you all the governments or the state government, in the past six, seven months, have been paying about three times what they used to get from the federal, from the federal education since the removal of subsidy. The uh, what is called the state's name has been increased by close about 50 to 60 percent compared to what they are having in pre-1999 um, uh, 2023. So, what is what are they using? What is the reason for this thing that is getting? What is the reason for? But if you say that you um, say that the government is doing the right thing by coming out to say what he said is it, 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 not terrible for me. Yes, he must have uh, influenced the choice of the current government. I'm talking about my first. That is not the problem. Just like that is happening with the last state as well. We have a power is having a lot of problems with his so called godfather. And that the even the APC and it is later that uh, defected from um, as a government, if it doesn't take its time. That is what happens. And we're talking about it. I always say, if this group are going to be for me, this is the thing that we say for the government as a lesson. Because when you wake up and just, you're not having somebody, and based on your news, um, and based on calls, and based on other people that are supposed to be the participants in the time to become government or whatever they want to be, and you say, you see that you are expressing it because you just think that. It's going to be a long time that we think they are able to control each other more as it were. But we don't need to see, we don't need to see what is happening. Those that are built end up having issues with them. They have been in the best things when Oshama is built a person came. It has happened in the Abia state when the other man is built a person that succeeded. It has happened in the United States with the children of the government and uh, the Solibar engineer. It has happened in the United States between uh, and can do the proper So I will say it over and over again. So it should be a lesson to this, our so called leaders as we are. We think that they will just, as they are pushing at the ATL 10, the next thing they will do is the ATL 10, the next thing they will do is put another person that will continue their table for another 16 years. And then we think that they will just do the back, they will do that and put the other person to whatever it is. But let's go and see what happens to the other person. I'm still waiting to hear from them by. And I'm sure that it's not going to share with you to talk issues like this. I'm sure that we'll come out uh, with a small thing, but I'm going to be here for him. It is what it is for it's just, it's just a problem for me because um, when, when I hear people of the same party coming out to say, uh, he left these, he did projects that were not necessary, he borrowed this and that. Uh, the present governor of Kaduna State was a senator when approvals were made. Uh, he spoke for Kaduna State when they were trying to get approval for the loans to be taken and all that. And today he's crying out. So what is the role of the party in the first place if within the party they cannot criticize things and talk when they're supposed to talk will you just wait until you become the governor and then you expose the last person that was there it gives me worry because i used to know parties as the people who hold the governors or the people in in power in check because if you are the governor your party leader, your party chairman, your party whatever will, will tell you this is not the manifesto we, we presented and all that. But here, we find the same government, the same party coming into power and said, uh, saying that he, he borrowed money too much, he did projects that were not good enough, uh, and all the kind of things. So it gives me worry. Uh, how do you say that is good for our democracy? Over the half, that is practically what you see in the country um, when it comes to the issue of the state. There is not that is practically what you do well. Um, it's a survival is still there, uh, starting for them. If they continue criticizing the government, then you see that the market is another time. Um, Sally, uh, what is his name? Uh, Senator Sally is a clear yeah. example of what happened when he fell out, when he was raising his voice. At the National Assembly, 
have seen it uh, against uh, some of the policies of the uh, government of everybody who have seen that in this. But at the end of October, we are going to find frustrated news so much that it will get a second time to go back to the Senate. So that is what happened. So most of them will be quiet. That will be. So that is the selfishness of the part of our legislators. They are politicians at the end of the day. And don't forget that when you sit down and talk, you don't talk, as they say in politics, or uh, yes, you want to get choked. So, but the fact remains that the problems are so powerful. After the president, the part of the people in our political space are the governors. You don't know how powerful the government can be, but when it comes to political appointments, uh, sharing of office, and the rest of them, the government will determine who goes to the Senate, it determines who goes to the House of Representatives, it determines who goes to the in the state houses of assembly. And we disagree with the government that that is for your political aim, your political career. The option you have is to move to another party. And when you move to another party, you are a bit um, uh, on the side of the state. So, uh, I have to tell you too that, yes, the process should be raised on some of these issues uh, are raised, but even if you raise them, what are the rewards that we do to as an individual? Because the, 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 the powerful, uh, the powerful, the powerful arm of uh, our uh, check out the democracy are supposed to be, supposed to be the legislative arm. We are the one that have the oversight functions of the executive. So, some of these things are talking about projects and the like. They ought to be more than we see that as we utilize some of these issues as it were, some of the projects. And when they see some money on the upside of this, they have to raise the alarm. And they will call the government to be there. They have the power to engage the government. They ask yourself how many of the members of the House of the State House of Assembly are able to do that. How many of them can stand? Straight to the eyes and look the government straight to the eyes and say, although oh, what you're doing is not right, and the government right say this is abuse of power, they cannot do it. Because the next thing is true that the government will put the speaker, the speaker, the majority of the speaker, the majority of the house, the majority of the house, and other principal officers, and people that are going to be And they are so always the people who are going to be the chairman of the house. So, who is going to be the house is put or the speaker? So, Let's move over to the Daily Trust. And this one talks about um, petrol subsidy removal. So we know the rippling cost of petrol at the moment. And this says, 10 months after federal government yet to roll out electric vehicles, the riders on this one are um, energy crisis threatens project, charging stations inadequate in states, experts task governors on infrastructure. So now, I remember even during the COP28, um, President Tinubu had promised about 100 um, electric buses, but we haven't seen anything yet. Why do you think it's taking so long? And could this be an execution problem? Because it's okay for us to write down on paper, make promises, but then when it comes to the execution, nothing is being done. Yeah, that's just one of those that comes out of it. Um, the refinery, part of that promise was also that the refinery was not working. Yeah. And we were told that the refinery was not working in December. This is April already. Four months they are scheduled. And until that we go. Um, that is are supposed to bring down the prices of uh, price of the petrol gas to a larger distance. But what what it is now? But uh, we're talking about the CNG uh, run vehicles. The federal government promise no one will do that. But funny, we have the CNG buses. I don't know the CNG buses. I don't know who is doing that. There are some buses in Lagos now. Don't do buses. So some of them are bigger. Who should do or doctor? I see them most of the time I'm heading towards that. As they say, government powered CNG buses. There are buses now. I don't know who is behind that, whether it's the state government or is that of the um, individuals um, in Brazil. But there are some buses I've seen. I don't know where it belongs to. But from the report, from the report, from the report, from the data paper, it says that the government does not have the promises that they made as they did. And that is where I thought that the Nigeria uh, Congress. Um, should have been able to uh, get their house together and be able to make sure that government make up the promises that you see what's happening now. Um, uh, John Gale has lost his job as a MSC president and is now getting set by the government, the government, the local party. And that is the 
and so I agree that he has taken his hands off of the uh, of the moon, as it were. And even because of that, he has been issued a visit to the uh, with the leadership of the NSC, which is why I think the last and the last of trying to make seems to be seen to come to because that is how we think of the Nigerians. And the government is not having a free day, as it were. The government is not having a free day. Those who augment the salary of workers, um, of the five thousand or how many was it? The salaries are two worker pay are two to the two months, a start. The cash transfer that was instead of which we to the government and the areas as it were, none have been done, not to the best of my knowledge, anyway. So, in most of the studies that have been made by presidents, when we were making this, um, uh, uh, particular subsidy as it were, none to me have been made. And the policy of human services continues to skyrocket. The policy of human services is the number of rights, um, the number of things. Even the things that we have been proposed to acquire acts, uh, how much is it is a new deal of a carry as it were. Both of you guys are going to bear us, purely and purely still, and nobody seems to be doing anything. So, um, it is, if you now come out to the other side, they say, oh, we want to bring down the government. But they look like they are many of the government. I ask myself, who is government? The point is not mine. But you know, but you know, government has to just put and say, this is government. Government is real. And, and what the definition of government, the government definition of government, when we are separate to school, I don't think really everybody knows that. But the government has to give up this petition. The rest are so things. If you are facing a rich Nigeria, it's a contract that we sign with the people of Nigeria. And if you want to give that contract, then you are, you are, you are not ready to be in the center of leadership. I'm not talking about the federal interview. I'm talking about the federal state and local government. Look at the political government. How many politics have been seen and shared? And I'm afraid of that. We are becoming a bigger nation. And that in itself is a very little not my idea for me. However, if you just need to fish, then you need to fish. Because if you give me fish, I'll eat that one. about salary, yeah, I just I remember that there's, there's a headline on Vanguard which is saying with health salaries will shut down varsities if, and that's according to the non-teaching staff. Uh, there was a, a warning strike that uh, came and went and we saw what happened and now nothing has been done about their demands and they're still saying that they're going to shut down universities. We have, we have children, we have wards, we have loved ones that are in school that are supposed to graduate maybe in three, four years, and now COVID took one year. Uh, the the ASU strike took almost another year. That is two years missing. And at the time they were supposed to graduate, funnily enough, uh, house rent was not the way it is today. Food prices were not the same as mm -hmm. so the cost is going higher and higher. Even the school fees are going higher and higher with no um, um, uh, what do they call it? Um, uh, scholarship insight and all that so I don't know um, what is your your take on what is happening the non-teaching staff are still protesting and saying they are going to shut down universities I don't know what your advice would be for them or the government we 
that because all the discussion we have about that we take over of it. So what is there to discuss uh, about Sandy National Green and Strike as well as uh, um, the ASU? Uh, that is that that is the good records, it's more of the good records. Um they have the Green and Strike, I think for about two weeks and um, I think they call on that strike. So if you say I think we're not striking again, I probably surprised that the question is that it's part of what we said, it's part of what I've said earlier on. Um, in terms of agreement, when you have an arrangement agreement with an institution or group of people, there you have to fulfill that agreement. Agreement. Then if you say agreement is an agreement, you get the agreement. Agreement is agreement. And the only contract uh, in law is a contract that is signed, sealed, and delivered. What that is done, then it's binding on both parties. So if you have any contract with a sound contract with this union, then you have to fulfill it. But what if you say that you are not able to fulfill it? That promise that um, when the SCLG buses will be provided, that say that they need to provide palliatives, that they need to uh, they open up the food reserves, uh, the bear reserves as a tier, and they will be shared among the millions, and they are going to do that, this and that. So, there's a couple of promises, um, and it reminds me of um, the law of local money. Since we go back to the most of the songs of the Spanish people, which is one of the issues of the This is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Um, we want to say thank you for coming. It's always a pleasure having a conversation with you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And let's continue to make the answers. It is our job to be able to put in place issues to be called. It is also for our members to be able to listen. Because too many young Americans cannot come to the TV station to talk. True. That is what we have to do because our journalists are going to speak their mind. But when our members are ready to listen, it's one to better. We don't have our own. <laughs> well, we hope they listen, like you say. Thank you so much, Mr. Chris. You too. All right, we've been speaking with Chris Kende Wonder. He's a member of the Chartered Institute of Arbitrators in the UK and he was joining us from Lagos State. We'll go on a short break and when we return, we'll be looking at a hot topic. Please stay with us. <laughs> 